Hello, everyone. We have had some chats before this, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity for um, being here to present to you today a talk, performance, whatever it's called. Um, it's a hybrid called Code, Play, and Rock and Roll, a web audio experiment. Who knows web audio API? Raise your hands strongly if you know web audio API. All right, just a bunch of people. That's great. That's good, because it means this talk never gets old. I've been doing this for some time now. And today I'm going to talk about the audio capabilities of your browsers, because it's much more useful than just playing Netflix or YouTube videos. And we're going to see what we can do inside a browser, which is hopefully you know, opening the doors to a plethora of applications. Now. Is that too small? Let's see. Before we start, all right. Does anyone recognize what this is? Raise your hands. A lot of people do. Nice. These are guitar pedals, guitar gear. You're going to see this in front of every serious looking guitarist. They spend thousands, every single money they earn from every single concert into these things, and they tweak them until they're, you know, never, and it never ends. They, they constantly tweak it all the time. For every single concert, you're never satisfied with your tone. So what these things do is they take in a guitar input. We have some spaces here. Please feel free to um, join us here. Um, they take your guitar signal and they shape it. They change your guitar signal in a way to make it sound more pleasing to the ear. Some effects are like reverbs, like we have in this room, echo, delay. Some are like tremolo, if you are into Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Phasers. Um, and there are like a lot more effects. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of all of those. They're really fancy. You step on them and they don't break. Sometimes guitarists just use them because they feel like stomping on the ground. They're also called stomp boxes. Now, this is what a pedal board looks like in real life. Some professional musicians have like five times the size of this with 10 times more gear on them. This is kind of what it looks like or what it might look like in software. This is pure CSS. There are no um, 3D effects here. It's all CSS. And this is a screenshot from an application that I developed called pedals.io. If you go to pedals.io, don't do it on your mobiles. I'm going to be embarrassed for the rest of the talk. It doesn't work on a mobile phone that well. You're going to see these pedals. Um, there's an overdrive. Does anyone know what an overdrive is? OK, distortion. More people, right. So these are the, the fundamental rock sounds um, that you're going to hear in rock bands or metal bands and so on and so forth. Those like distorted sound. They do that by very simply amplifying the guitar signal just like a thousand times. That's all. Amplify the pure guitar signal a thousand times and you have a really pleasing tone for your um, rock song. That's actually how it all started. They cranked it up, literally, to 11. And there's a chorus effect for more mellow sounds, um, delays and reverbs and cabinets. And you can all implement all of them inside the browser, inside JavaScript, with a very simple API. And I'm going to show you um, how that works in a little bit. So my name is Arman. I am. Now wearing a couple of different hats. You might have seen me as the founder of Coyote of GmbH. That's the parent company 
um, that I'm running right now. We also have a brand called MVP Strasse. We build tiny MVPs, small products for startups. We also give them um, foundational teams. I'm acting as a fractional CTO as well. Lately, I have founded an app called Dream Kid, which is a generative AI storyteller for kids in hospitals. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Dreamkid.ai. The webpage works on mobile. <laughs> I'm very active on GitHub as well. I have several open source libraries for audio processing, for brain signals processing. I have a master's degree in brain signals and machine learning, and I'm very happy that AI is cool again. It's back in the game. Um, Server-side programming, microservices. I've done a bunch of stuff. I'm going to share the link to the presentation. You can check out my GitHub profile. OK. Web audio. Hmm. Before we get to this, shall we start with a little song? See how this thing performs in real life. OK, we actually have a signal. I'm surprised. Let's try. Does anyone know this piece? What is it? Yes. Let's see if it's going to work. bad start. Well, the original took like five takes. This is the first one, so not bad. Let's go back to web audio. Now, what is web audio? It is an API that is available in all the browsers. What are some common APIs that you know that's available in a browser? Local storage, great. Anything else? Navigation. Anything else? Video. Media source. Yes. We're getting really close. So like there are all sort of stuff. Like right? there is fetch API and um, hmm? WebGL. Yeah, more fun stuff. Browsers are now like operating systems. They're capable of a lot of stuff, and they are great at simplifying things for you. And Web Audio is one of those APIs. It's more on the side of like not web applications, crowd applications. It's more for creative work. But practically, whatever you can do with audio, you can now do inside a browser. It is particularly useful for games. If you're building a game with WebGL, for example, it's a great idea to use Web Audio API because it can give you a 3D world that you can create sound sources in and do sound processing. Like when you're walking away from something, the um, sound gets dimmer and dimmer. Or you know, in a closed box, you're going to hear it muffled and so on. It's also great for sound production applications like DJ apps or music production applications like DAWs, DAWs, Digital Audio Workstations. You can practically mix any song in your browser the way you like, with like a professional um, producer. 
which has, of course, all the added benefits of a cloud infrastructure. It is available to you wherever you go, so you don't really need like special installation keys or whatever. You don't have to take your laptop with you. It's available everywhere. It's great if you want to do smaller applications like voice training. It's great for art installations because you, because you can control every single bit, every single literal bit of the sound that you're either hearing or capturing. You can also generate sounds. So it's great for synthesizers as well. You can build musical instruments inside the browser with Web Audio API. It's actually like really, really amazing. Um, it's one of the best things that have ever happened to the browsers, in my opinion. So how does it work? The architecture is genius. Of course, it's built upon the best practices of audio architecture from the past decades. It is a node-based layout. You create a source node, that's like a input. You create a target node, that's like your speakers. And you connect them through a very simple method called connect. If you call the connect method, two nodes connect to one another. Then you can do really fantastic stuff. You can have a channel splitter to split stereo audio to left and right, and you might want to apply different effects to them. Um, you can have a delay node. It is super simple. You don't have to implement your delay algorithm. It is already implemented for you. I'm going to show you the code in a little bit. Um, you can just create one single delay node and adjust its parameters, and you have a really nice delay effect. You have some filters for implementing equalizers, which are really handy, really useful. And here's a very good scenario. Think of YouTube, Netflix, whatever. You can actually manipulate the EQ of those tools with Web Audio API. There are a lot of Chrome extensions for this. It's amazing. Um, the code is also super simple. And you can tap into the media source, the video, incoming video, and manipulate its audio. Super exciting stuff. It's very, very useful, especially as an accessibility feature as well, because you don't really have always have like those EQ controls all the time. You can compress the signal, for example, to reduce loud noises. It's amazing. Um, another node that I love is the gain node, which allows you to change um, how loud a, an audio input is. It comes with a lot of components. It's object-oriented, perfect. You just new instantiate any of these nodes, connect them together in whatever um, map you like, and you're going to get some really crazy sounds. Everything starts with an audio context. Does anyone know Canvas API? A lot of people do, right? So Canvas has a context that allows you to draw on it, right? Web Audio has the same concept. It has an audio context that allows you to operate inside. There's an offline audio context. If you want to process effects offline for quicker results, not in real time, you can also use an offline context. So you can render your music, your production, into an actual song inside the browser. Um, there are like tons of other stuff. What is really interesting is you can also connect WebRTC streams to this. So you can have a video call, Zoom or whatever, and connect its audio output to Web Audio and manipulate the audio, which is amazing. Um, this allows us on Pedals.io to do live sessions. Multiple musicians can get together. Of course, there's a lot of latency, so it's not very practical. But through WebRTC, you can actually exchange your audio and have effects on both sides. Like you can play as if you're in, a, in the same room, even if you're miles away. It's amazing, really. Like everything that generates audio can be processed here. What I really love um, about these nodes are that they're the wave shaper, which allows you to freely manipulate every single bit in the incoming audio. That's actually how you implement some of the overdrive sounds. Um, there's an audio worker node, which allows you to run multi-threaded applications. So you're not even blocking the main thread. Like a professional audio application, you can run multiple threads and all of your effects there, and it's not going to affect your performance. You can actually have a live performance. Now, there's a lot of like 
delay here, latency here when I'm playing. I don't really have a monitor from the um, the audio device, so I'm hearing the song with you, and I'm trying to adjust my playing to it. Very difficult, but this normally does not happen if you have like monitors that are um, looking at you. Here is a very small example. Um, you create an audio context. You can create a node by saying context.createGain or a uh, new gain node and passing in the context. You connect it to the destination, which are the speakers, and that's pretty much it. Then if you want to load an MP3 file, for example, you quite literally load it as an XHR request and create a buffer source for static sounds and just connect that source to the gain. As simple as that. Very straightforward. And it works. And now by setting the gain parameter, gain.gain, .gain, you can adjust the volume. It's very simple. Very, very simple. Every single audio tag that you use in HTML or video tag that you use in HTML also has a media source. You can create a media source from those tags. Then this is how you can easily manipulate, for example, a YouTube stream. You don't even have to do an XHR call. So what is Pedalboard.js? Pedalboard.js is the world's first web audio framework for guitar effects. I did it over 10 years ago in 2012. Um, it was actually before web audio was a thing. And I also um, gave a lot of feedback on how web audio API um, got shaped. It is GPL licensed on GitHub. You can download it. It's very, very well documented. The source code is also um, object oriented. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And it is built on top of something called Google Closure Library. Does anyone know what Google Closure Library is? Wow, no one. Amazing. Does anyone know what Google Closure Compiler is? No one? Do you know TypeScript? TypeScript Compiler. Good. Um, Google Closure Compiler is Google's JavaScript compiler that came around, I think, 2008. And like we had type-safe JavaScript in the browser through JS Doc without introducing a new language um, for like 15 years now. Google Closure Compiler is still active. It's what Google Docs, Google Maps, whatever, all of Google's tools are built upon. And it is an amazing piece of software. Check it out. Like If you're going to take anything from this talk, let it be Google Closure Compiler. Especially, you know, we also heard yesterday about like some problem with TypeScript, right? It's like a lot of people are trying to get away from TypeScript now because it's like too much. Well, there's TS Doc, which is influenced by JS Doc, which is the engine uh, Google Compiler, Google Closure Compiler runs on, that rewrites your code, optimizes it, makes it 10% faster, um, and gives you type safety without having any runtime components, which is amazing. It doesn't require you to change um, your runtime. So it also uses an MVVM architecture. Um, anyone familiar with MVVM? Model, view, view, model? This might be the second thing you might want to get out of this talk. It is the architecture behind, also behind very common frameworks nowadays, like Vue.js and React. To a certain degree, or React first version at least, to a certain degree, they are implementing MVVM, which is um, a really nice architecture for building user interfaces, scalable user interfaces. So Pedalboard.js also has some components, nodes, if you will but they are more like real life objects. There's a stage like I have here. There's a board, a pedal board, and there are boxes, stump boxes. And a reverb, a delay, an overdrive is a box. So it's a child class. There are foot switches and you can toggle them very easily. There are LEDs, there are pots, potentiometers, so you can adjust the parameters. And I'm an electronics engineer by education and I was building my own guitar pedals at school, at university. So like this is very much like that. Bring together components and they kind of work. You have a box that has two pots that are connected to parameters. 
It's very simple. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of all of these things, but one beautiful thing is, of course, I can have a stream input. That's how I get my guitar into this environment. Um, yeah, a lot of details. There is one more thing, though. Web Media API. Did you hear about Web Media API? One? Well, yeah, not bad. Now, this is great for building all the applications again with controller by hardware. MIDI um, stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's invented in the 70s, I think, and 80s. So, perfect. So you have like keyboards or DJ equipment. They are all communicating over MIDI with one another. You connect it to a synthesizer like Web Audio API, and you can generate audio with it. Um, and with Web Media API, you can bring MIDI signals into the browser. And this is opening up so many possibilities. I also have another talk uh, on Web Media API. You can build games with it. You can build all the applications, again, that, are, that you can control physically with hardware. And think of the YouTube um, equalizer thing. You can actually build that. And it's very fun to have like a YouTube song and to be able to change its equalizer with your thumbs. Um, it's amazing. This is also what professional video editors use. They have control surfaces that talk to your um, software or music producers as well. They have control services that talk to their software. They all talk MIDI. And now all of that is available in the browser. So let's go beyond crowd applications. We can do so much more with this. Um, it is also extremely simple. You do navigator that requests MIDI access, and then it gives you a function. And that function, you have the MIDI object. You have inputs and outputs. You can either receive or send um, values. And there is practically one single event handler on MIDI message that you have to listen to, because everything in MIDI is a series of arrays of three numbers. Just that. Everything in MIDI works with an array of three numbers. Um, one is the controller program change parameter, the first one. Second one is um, a sub value, and the third one is its actual value from 0 to 127. Now, if I may, let me try. So uh, this is one of those MIDI controllers. It's connected wirelessly to my Mac. And when I press on these buttons, you see the pedals get turned on and off. They're toggling. This is via the um, Web Media API. And let me try. OK. Now, there is. Something like this. This is called a wah pedal or an expression pedal. It allows you to express yourself emotionally, quite literally. And now look at the, the second pedal, the wah. Look at the effect. I can control CSS transform rotation with this thing. And this is a very popular pedal. And I'm going to hopefully demonstrate that as well. All right. Uh, let's see. Ah, perfect. Demo time. Let's get to some songs. Are you bored? It's good? Let's see. I can also change my patches by stomping on this. Yep, let's see. Oh. 
Good. Thank you. Now, let's see the next one. This is something that I hope more people know. <laughs> okay. Ready. We maybe might have a little, little bit more volume. Would that work? Maybe a little bit more volume. about it. <sighs> Thank you so much. This is really difficult. Much more harder than being on actual stage. Now, <laughs> let's do something else. I'm eating a little bit into your Q&A, but I hope you're going to like this one. This guitar also happens to be a MIDI controller. So what it does is it converts everything I'm playing into MIDI signals and transmits that into the browser, which means we can actually have very interesting sounds here. Let me try, and I hope it's going to work. How about this? Good, right? Now, <laughs> everything happens inside your browser. It's JavaScript all the way. I didn't write these um, applications. You can find them online. They're amazing. Now I'm going to invite Jose to the stage because we're going to sing a song, and I want everyone here to accompany because this is something everyone knows. And we're going to do a little karaoke session. Good? First I was afraid I was petrified Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side But then, then I spent I so many nights Thinking how you did me wrong And I grew strong And I, strong. And I learned how to get along and So you're back from outer, outer space, space. I just, just walked in to find to hear that sad look upon their face. I should have changed that stupid log. I should have. In fact, I. You'll be back to bother me. Go Come and go. go. <laughs> Won't Walk out the door. Just turn around now. Cause you're not welcome anymore. Weren't you the one who tried to hurt me with goodbye? Think I crumble. Think, think I lay down and die, die. oh no, no not I. I I will survive, oh as long as I know how to love I have 
I have no idea. I've got all my left to live. I've got all of my love to give. And I'll survive. I will survive. Hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ozzy. Amazing. We literally had zero seconds of rehearsal. So everything is like improvisation. Thank you so much. This is basically it. Web Audio API, Web Media API, Gears, Electronics, they're all so good. You can do anything you want with them. Let's please get further than a crowd application. And yeah, JavaScript will survive. Thank you.